So yeah, we've been uh, doing for now maybe like five streams. We've been uh, placing uh, founding founding blocks on the legs. And um, today we're going to try to close on that. The thighs are complete in terms of the founding blocks. And the, uh, the tibia is what's left so that the, the bottom part, the lower half of the character is uh, is ready for, for detailing, polishing, that sort of stuff. I mean, polishing is it's pretty much all polished. If you look at the, the thighs, it's just a matter of um, of a mid-sized detail and smaller details and whatnot. So yeah, let's jump into it. So this is an object that was placed in uh, in dynamic symmetry. Here, oops. Give me one second. I just realized I forgot my copy. And I am back. Bustoke, hey there. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, um, pretty tired today. Uh, I hope I'm going to be able to make an exciting stream, but uh, if I don't know that I have tried. So yeah, this object is uh, in dynamic symmetry, so so I can work work on it, but it's not like if I'm going to super explore like a different shape for this one. Also remember from the last stream, I tried to do something where I... Sorry, I tried to do something where I... Um, I started with the, the uh, top layers and worked my way uh, with the inner layers, and it just didn't work. But at least we tried. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't really give much like leeway into like testing new shapes also for certain areas because of that. But yeah, like I said, at least we tried. Uh, so right off the bat, let me just check if I cannot go and grab a... Uh, is there like a longer tube on this character? Not really, it's those things. All right. Uh, 
<laughs> Sorry. George, muy buenas, Marco. Gracias, gracias. We're going to duplicate that mesh. We're going to use it for here.
Right. Hello there. Looking awesome so far. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I have something stuck at the back of my throat and uh, having some issues dealing with it. Hey, thanks for the sub. Merci beaucoup. Pas mal gentil. Un vrai cœur en chocolat. Uh, bon. Ben, I think we're gonna try to, um, at this point, let's rematch that thing. So since it's in dynamic symmetry, we're gonna delete by symmetry first, then Z remesh. Oops. Uh, disable symmetry. Z remesh. Z remesh again because it's not super good. I have a bunch of little artifact. Let's auto group. Try again. Marine weld. And there you go. Kind of like a weird, uh, weird thing happening here. Nothing we cannot fix. Oh, it has a hard time in symmetry, huh? Uh, there's still some jagginess. Such a not important piece, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. Let's uh, be optimal with our time. And this piece, we're gonna polish it by hand. Oops. Yeah, it's not really helping that much. I might just fake the uh, interconnectivity of those two pieces instead. Man, my arm really hurts these days. I've been working a lot the uh, on the uh, my elementalist uh, remake project, and uh, the uh, I've been very really motivated, right? So uh, at night I've been also working. Well, it's mostly at night that I can work, you know? but I've been uh, I've been working a lot on this project without taking much break, and uh, now I'm starting to really feel it. But I'm mostly done with the modeling phase. Now I just have to 
make the texture and renders, so this should actually not be too hard on the arm. It's a different arm position, let's say, at the very least. And uh, yeah, I already have, I already know what I'm going to do once I'm done with that project also. It's not going to be something for the apocalypse, it's just going to be like a little project. I've been, um, well, actually, be before I do a project, I think I'm just going to take a little break. Maybe, maybe try um, Wukong. Been uh, not playing it for a long time now, and uh, I'm pretty interested to see the game, so probably going to try that. And then I'm going to jump on my another project, which is going to be just a, like what I call a relaxation project. And uh, what I'm thinking, actually, what I'm inspired by is um, there's like a, I guess, I guess I would call it a tale, or a, it's like a folkloric tale uh, of a, um, it's a uh, the story of a, a little boy, uh, maybe not like a little boy, maybe like a teen or like a young adult. Uh, it's called, uh, there's actually, it's, it, it comes from a song, actually. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't even know if it was like a song only or like a tale before it was a song. But it, it feels like those like cautionary tales, uh, folkloric cautionary tales from uh, from America. And it's, uh, the song is called The Devil Went Down to Georgia. And it's basically the story of a, uh, of like a, the devil making a deal with a kid to um basically he just wants to get like the, the 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 kid's soul right and uh he bets the kid that he can uh win in a uh like a a fiddle contest as in like playing like a piece of music and the best piece of music wins so the song is about like both of them clashing on in this like duel musical duel right and uh there's a video of that song actually um uh, from les claypool which is les claypool is the the front man of uh, primus right and uh i think he also did the claymation for the video clip of his own rendition of that song slash tale whatever and uh, I really like the imagery. And it's a, um, it's going to be like probably the, the thing. It's going to be my inspiration for my next piece, most probably. I just have an, Im in a, in a, in an imagery in my head that I, I really like. So, uh, yeah. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to aim to do next. I'll just leave it to that for the moment. I'll uh, mirror and weld it to the other side for the moment.
Let's check the chat. <clears throat> Two last chapters of Wukong might drive you crazy. Good luck on those. Uh, why? Because of their difficulty? Because, I mean, I'm... I've went through the... the gauntlet of video games. Making it hard on myself and stuff, and, uh... I'm pretty robust, I'd say, at this stage. Uh, good luck, I'm here because Twitch said spider robot. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, just to personify the entire spidiness of this character. So the idea is that the character will look like something like this. By the end. Plus the pose and everything, so... Spider robot. From my collection of character insectoids. Uh, hello, Marco. I've uh, I have need a big, big. I have need a big, big fan for a few years now. Just wanted to stop in and say thank you. I have learned most of what I know from watching your vods countless times. Wow, cool, awesome! You're a true master, and I consider myself lucky to have your content to learn from. Cheers from Las Vegas, dude. That's fantastic. Super. I'm really happy to to, to read that. Oh yeah, I love it. Thanks, little Drago. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Cool. Okay, so now these pieces here are all going to be individual pieces that I'm going to have to cut in parts. I think there's still a little bit of something I can do before like starting to cut the pieces. Really get all of those uh, internal internal meshes. You see, if I truly wanted to, to test... Um, Going backwards, I would have done the the plates before doing the uh, the stuff that's in between, right? But that would be just ridiculous. Like I'm not ready to to give myself this much trouble. Uh, All right, so I'm going to duplicate that on the other and put it on the other side. I'm going to use that. I'm just going to do like this and flip. Oop, there we go. You kind of like have to eyeball. Eyeball it to get it to be the same size and stuff, but uh, yeah. Uh, it should be all right. Do I want to have it more inside of the the feet or not. I guess just a little bit. Something like that. That's good. It was not even uh, well placed. As in not symmetrical, I mean. I'll have one last one that's going to be at the back of the foot. This one is not going to stick out as much.
Yeah. And the rest is really all uh, mechanical pieces. So we're going to duplicate this because we're going to keep one as a reference for concept. And also it's going to become the like inside piece at some point. So our other, our other one right there, this one we're going to cut in pieces. I'm going to give it a brightish color and I'm going to paint where I want it to be separated. So we're going to recreate uh, all the thicknesses of every plates. So I can already like, I'm going to pretty much draw right before the end of each plates or in the middle, depending if I, I have um, space or not. I think it's for the, the line here. It's going to be very hard to do that with zittery mesh. I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to try to place like a like a mesh there to do the job. Oh. I'm really not liking the the definition of the foot. I'm 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 doing the separations right now and there's something that really feels off. I think I'm gonna scratch that and I'm going to kind of like define it a little bit better because it's just not working for me. All right. Let's get back on the cutting board. I'm 
going to keep the same idea, right? I'm not like redesigning per se, but I kind of like need to make sure I know where I'm going because some aspects of the sculpt were not well defined enough, even like for, for me who knows what the design's supposed to look like. Also, I'm kind of like wondering if I should not try to do like the foot symmetrical. It's like it already has like a symmetrical design. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to do that. Let's duplicate this. Also something else, okay. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to place the um, the cylinder for, for like these parts right there. I'm going to place it now. So uh, I guess what I'm going to try to do is see if I cannot like salvage it from this here. Can I create a cylinder from this object knowing it will be probably perfectly placed? Or should I just place it on top? I think I'm just going to place it on top. I'm going to eyeball it.
Okay, that's pretty much as close as we're gonna get. So let's insert this piece here. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Forgot to do this part though. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome. Okay, yeah, so they are, they are offset one to each other. Which is going, it's not, I'm not going to be able to place them perfectly. So we're going to go one after the other instead. And this is really just going to be there to facilitate having those like shapes coming together. Okay, all right. Looks about right. And one on the other side. Yeah, for this one, I can't flip it on itself. I turn it 180 degrees. All right, it's going to be about that. Here, I'm just going to place a uh, cube, cube, oops, stop too abruptly. And this we're just going to have it there to eventually model like that little part here. And I want to do it in symmetry, dynamic symmetry also. So this is all for what's going to connect. Actually, I'm going to give it the shape right now because it just looks stupid. Let's do it now. 
Uh, could Intel i7 uh, handle ZBrush? Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. I'm not a tech, techie guy. Good morning. Well, hello to you, Oliver. Okay, it should be good enough to be able to, to work. I'm going to assign poly groups to that. Increases. Apply dynamic subdivision. Give it a proper amount. Let's apply this level. These I'm going to have them, first of all, connected. Try something here. Inflate poly loop. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, this is going to be okay this way. Good. So for the top part here, you see like now and these like really connect well and blend well together. What I can do is plan to actually have the mesh, this mesh on top kind of like following, but at some point like hard cut and then it, it works with the rest. Probably gonna hard cut closer to here like that. There we go. Nope, I'm not working on symmetry right now. Smarter sim. Smarter sim is gonna take too much time. I'm just going to start over without forgetting the smart reason.
There we go. Now it's going to be flush. That's good. Back to the leg. Actually, I'm going to save. Hey man, how's it going? I came here to get inspired by your amazing work. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, it's doing fine. Like I said, my, my arm really freaking hurts right now, but uh, I'm almost done with that little thing I wanted to finish. Okay. So now let's try to work on the legs in symmetry. So we're going to Cut that one off, uh, and we're doing. We're going to try to figure out what's the symmetry of that that foot. So let's start by just like like aiming roughly, and then uh, mirroring well. Oops, in with dynamic uh, symmetry activated. Uh, oh, I lost the gizmo, so let's do it again. All right. Mirror and weld. So you see, no, it wasn't working like that. We're gonna kind of like move the gizmo around. We're gonna remove perspective. Try to aim, let's see. Okay. Better. We're not there yet. Actually, you know what? I'm also going to move the gizmo so it's kind of like in a a cleaner angle. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's very good. We're we have pretty much the same volume right there. No loss of volume, everything like mostly aligns. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. We found it. Okay. So I'll be working on this now for the symmetry. We still have uh, what I was talking about before. We still have to do that just to really define better what the design of the shoe is or like how how mechanically it works. Oh, I was not in symmetry. Even if that gizmo is not symmetrical right now, we can place it on one of its sides and then change its gizmo so that like it becomes the same gizmo as the symmetrical piece. And then we'll be able to just like mirror and weld it. 
There we go. Um, don't need to keep the, the cable. Okay, so now to give it the gizmo of the foot, we just need to have the uh, put the foot piece at the bottom here. This one at the bottom too. I'm going to create a uh, a new folder just for the foot. There you go. All right, so the foot has its correct gizmo. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to make sure it has no uh, subdivision levels. We're going to merge it down. And now we're just going to remove this part of the foot. And now, if you look at the gizmo, the gizmo of this piece is correct. So we can now mirror and weld it on the other side. And ta-da! It's now following, following the foot. This piece here is uh, going to be a. Uh, well, I want it to be a um, rotating thing, but we're going to have to change the shape because it's not going to fit under the foot correctly as it is. Um, let's let's place a cylinder here, starting from once again the foot mesh. We're going to duplicate it. Um, like a normal cylinder it's not going to be it's not facing the right side But really, I just wanted to have the gizmo of the foot. Oh, my, it's not even. Oh, that was a lot of trouble for that thing, actually. Let's delete that. Let's flip this. 90 degrees. Yeah, I see. It's not even following. What? Why, why am I doing that? <laughs> oh, boy. Just trying to get it to have the gizmo of the foot again. Marin weld. Okay. Good enough. So it's not going to be, the gizmo is not going to be perfectly in the center of that mesh, but it's not the point. There's no point to having it be perfect anyway. So we're going to be okay with this approximation. Can have it a bit bigger, maybe more at the back, like this. Mm. 
Yeah, that should be fine. And now we can add some complexity to it. Actually, I'm going to give it some space if I want to add some stuff before. Um, just like some IMM and stuff. Let's find something uh, a more complex IMM. Oh, do, wait, do I have them here already loaded? I don't think so. No, they don't seem to be here. We're going to get them from here. We're going to we're going to grab the Vitaly stuff. There we go. Um, hey Marco, hope you're doing well. I wanted to ask you for advice. I've been trying to find a junior position as a 3D artist and I've been applying everywhere. I even applied at Kiosk Masons. Do you have advice for a junior artist trying to break in the industry? Yeah, you really have to be seen. That's really the biggest thing. And um, because especially like, like with the years that are getting, well, um, the more we advance in time, the more like uh june uh people go to school to learn 3d and to i'm just trying to say there's like a lot of competition right so to be able to get a job you really have to make yourself seen so work on like portfolio pieces um and uh yeah that's 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 really the um the number one thing you can do is just work on your stuff you work on your stuff, you get better, you post it online, you get some you get some views and whatnot, and that's how people notice you, give you a job, that sort of stuff. It's the it's the same charade as it was when I was uh myself trying to find a job. And uh, it's not it's not an easy thing. Um, you need to put a lot of time in still doing work. But really, it's like the portfolio is your calling card. That's It's always going to portfolio that's going to be the incentive to for someone to give you work and etc. So, yeah. Other tips I would uh, I would give you is uh, try to find a specialty and sell your specialty, but also uh, show um, uh, versatile versatile skills. So like I would say like try to sell yourself like at seventy percent on what you want to do if it's hard surface or whatever else, but like you you should have pieces that show that you know how to handle like cloth or um, like base knowledge for anatomy it's always like a good like show of like artistic prowess Fusion, hello.
Whoops. I always forget that the clip brush doesn't work when we're working in symmetry, which is very unfortunate. So now I want to smash this down, but like if I change the gizmo, it doesn't work. So I need to like place the gizmo, do an action, kind of like undo it, and then go back to the action transpose line. And then I didn't fuck up my gizmo and the action line was, the transpose line was where I needed it to be, which is a kind of like a weird, uh, weird trick to do. Uh, I'm working on the paint of some of your model, the Frog Knight, this afternoon. Such a joy to print and paint. That's fantastic. That's great. Send me the pictures at some point. And I'm going to remove those. They're kind of like in the way. So these will truly be disconnected from from the piece here and I'm going to disconnect them right now because they're kind of like hard to work with. Um, I tag you when it's done. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, it's funny to have your stream in the background at the same time. <laughs> yeah. See what you mean. Marco, how works your planner brush? Um, 
So the planar brush, it just it takes the uh, the normal of the pixel on which you start, and it basically just flatten everything to that normal. So let's say like this plane goes in that direction, and this is lower than this. So like with the planner brush, it's going to flatten everything to that first. And if you uh, that first pixel I I started on uh, poly, I mean, if you press out, it's going to flatten like upwards like that. So you get like a flat, flat, flat piece, but it doesn't curve. So yeah, but like you could try to like use flatten to, to make like a section completely flat, for example. But like, I don't really always want things to be super flat and like perfectly squared. Sometimes I want things to have like a natural curve in the shape. Actually, very often I want. And H polish is better to kind of like just flatten the piece while controlling like it's curve. Sometimes I'll even use the, the move brush, really give the, the shape that I want for the object. Yeah, it's a much more interesting shape now. Okay. this as a separate piece was a better idea so that's good um here it's pretty obvious that is going to be a separate piece i can separate it later I'm just going to draw where I think I'm going to be separating those pieces, just to, to double check.
Okay, it's much more obvious now. I'm ready to splice that part. Wow. Uh, from your personal opinion and experience being a character artist and running a studio, do you think the video game industry in Montreal will pick back up soon again? Uh, no effing clue. I really do not know. Like I know like the subsidies are going to to AI right now. So uh, for the moment it doesn't bode well for for studios. So it's just a matter of uh, um, investors in general or the governments to start investing in production again, which uh, I would find that extremely silly that it doesn't come back because people want video games and stuff but at some point somebody has to put money in the industry for games to get created and at the same time it's like well you know there was a lot of games like super high production game that came out uh in the last years that were not very good games so it's not very attractive to um to like investors to put their money in big studio big productions etc Uh, to clean some pieces is very useful. Thanks, Marco. Yeah, absolutely. Any of you worked with the iPad version? Uh, I I did test it. Um, my fr my friend uh, Fred had as iPad, and uh, he showed it to me, and uh, it looked pretty cool. If I had an iPad, I would definitely play with that. Okay, I think that should be probably separately separated well enough. I'm 
just trying to make sure everything is separated. No, here it's not good. Fixable though. Here we're gonna delete all that. We're gonna mirror and weld. We're gonna keep the pieces that we want to keep. There we go. And this part here also we're gonna get rid of. All right, now we can uh, zid remesh. As long as everything fits well, I see one or two things that I want to fix first. I'm kind of like making sure the line flow is all correct. All right, let's try to see what's going, what this is going to give me. Let's do a little border selection, reverse, spread, polish to remove the, the jagginess. Hmm. Also, wait, revert that. I don't really want to keep that piece.
I'm gonna delete this. So once again, zipper mesh, let's test it out. Okay, a bit messy. Is there a floating piece here? Why is it doing that? Okay, maybe too much jagginess still. Once again, mask. A bit cleaner, still not super cool. Let's see, is there any floating pieces? Auto group. Yeah, a little floating piece. Very weld. Wait. All right. Revert. Revert. Okay, to this point. I always forget. Delete by symmetry, remove symmetry, Z remesh. Not much cleaner, but let's run it one more time. Nope, still has uh, stuff it doesn't like. All right. Um, well, then let's do it piece by piece. Wow, really having problems. Okay, let's brute force it. Let's cut it in like super obvious pieces. Now it should work. There we go, okay. So there was something about its edge that it had a problem with. And weld, boom, there we go. We have it on the other side. Um, let's try to do like two pieces at the same time. Okay, so this one doesn't really have problems. It's just, it's too high. And we're gonna even try to be even more demanding. I'm going to cut different poly groups for sections of it and ask it to keep poly groups. Okay, except for that little thing here. The rest is pretty good. I'll fix it by hand. Delete. Boom. Go. Extrude. The rest is uh, maybe this is a bit weird.
This is good. This is good. Uh, these one at a time again. I'm not going to test my luck too much, but I'm going to ask it to give these to me into the front polygroups. Normally, I don't need to clean this much. It's just because it was giving me some problems and I don't care to deal with these problems. So I'm just quickly cleaning it. It's like, and I get like almost zero problems. So perfect. Although it's weird that it's giving me some triangles in some areas. But once again, pretty easy to fix. piece this one is the the funkiest yeah this probably didn't help actually There you go, clean mesh. Perfect, let's um... Let's grab all of that. I'm just gonna have to uh, lower the, uh, the bottom section to be back to. Floor, there you go. We're going to align them. And now, uh, Marin Weld. Boom, we have our clean foot mesh. And before I put the the thickness, I'm just going to move things around a little bit. So many AI stuff happening every day, no retail blow tool. Yeah. This here, I'm going to need to add like a good thickness to this mesh to, to work properly.
Ooh, I had, I had these stuff here that didn't translate well. There we go. So all the um, all the sides are well aligned now, but we're gonna need just to okay. What's going on? Oh wait, I forgot my. There you go. Now I'm just gonna make sure that the uh, the surfaces look clean. Go clean, clean, clean. Sometimes, when using H polish, you can easily flatten uh, a, a surface that you had that was that was curved. So sometimes, what I do after I'm done using H polish, I might use the move brush to kind of like re give it its its kind of like natural curve. 
H polish, you really remove all of the like, let's say the artifact or the bumps on the surface, but you don't want to lose the volume. So sometimes you need to kind of like fix it afterwards. So I'm going to just finish cleaning that surface, right? And before I commit further, I'm going to just like compare its shape to what I had before, just to make sure that um, just to make sure I'm keeping the uh, the volume that I that I had and that I liked. So I got my foot. I can just make the other one reappear on top. And where I think I might have loose a volume, I can just go and try to get it again. Good enough. Now on to the adding the thickness. Sorry, I'm still seeing a few things. Okay. Final loop. And now um, there's like I'm there's a a, um, a certain intention that I have with adding that thickness and controlling it all around. So we're gonna actually customize the thickness that it gives us, not for every piece, but for a lot of them. And that's going to be done by hand. Um, I'm just going to fix some volumes that are more apparent now that I've added the thickness. Uh, my mistake was done with that piece here. I forgot to enable ignore groups. So to control the thickness, I'm just going to, to grab the uh, the back side of the mesh, mask it. I'll make sure that everything is max, masked except for that. I'm just going to push the mesh.
So not being able to work with the clip curve is going to be a pain in the ass here to flatten some of these pieces, unfortunately. But it is what it is. These I'm going to make them like paper in like that. This on top, we're not really going to see it, so I'm going to ignore it. These are supposed to be flat. Or they can taper out a little bit. This one's going to be flat to the ground. So we're good to that piece. Oh yeah, this one is a, is a very, very apparent uh, thickness, so we're actually going to view it like this here. There's like a gap here also. At first I thought I was going to fill it with the, the thickness of these pieces, but I don't think that it's going to be... Um, really easy to do. I guess I'm going to push that thickness in a bit more so it, yeah. And the in-betweens here, maybe I'm just going to use my blocking that's under everything kind of like fill it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be the, the simplest thing to do. Okay. For this one here, I don't think that there's anything to do. Yeah. So we're going to move on to this one. This one we are also going to have to flatten it to the ground. Okay, and the last one, this one here, the most important.
right, so mostly everything is placed well. Uh, next, we're going to just um, kind of like give it like an automatic cleanup. Uh, mm -hmm. For that, we need to assign the creases. So we're going to we're going to hide everything but the edges. There we go on the edges. And we're going to attribute an automatic crease angle. Mirror and weld. So even if we put dynamic subdivision, we get these creases like this, which is, which is fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. And now what we're going to do is we're going to once again, just have only the edges appear. We're going to mask this unmask the rest and now we're going to tell it polish crisp edges so it's going to round everything that is not on a crisp edge there you go okay looks good and it did round some areas that maybe we didn't want to have like rounded off uh, not much but for that, we can just give it like a final uh, fix, let's say. Like here, I had like a specific curve here that I didn't want to lose. This. that this one here as well Here I lost a uh, an angle that I didn't wanna didn't wanna lose. So let's try to get it back. I think I'm going to remove the creases here. Of course, like this surface is going to need some polish because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit like Pinchina here as well.
Uh, I really wish I had the um, the clip curve. That was uh, that's something that I don't know how to clean easily. Otherwise. I guess like this. Uh, not good. And the foot is like almost placed orthographically. That's the worst. I'm using local symmetry just to compensate for like such a, a small angle. I'm going to keep that as it is. Nope. Probably going to be fixed that by hand instead. Okay. I think at this point I'm going to commit this, uh, this shape. Commit its subdivision levels. commit and what I want to do is just do the, the, the last final clean for the surface and all the pieces will have been modeled we're still missing the pieces for the tibia here All right, on to cleaning that. I'm going to read the chat. Sorry, I've been uh, kind of like uh, my head. Um, I 
Hello, Marco. Buenas tardes. Buena. Good afternoon to you, too. Uh, hi, is there any online course or tutorial you recommend to buy to improve at our surface character? I mean, we do sell some on our store. Uh, the, the link at the bottom of the screen. If you go to shop, you'll see the videos like tutorials we have there. I'm going to round off these angle here. Okay, that's good. It's fine here. So right now it's like pretty flat some of these area, but like I'm going to add some extrusion to to make it look um, more interesting. These I'm going to do on the second phase of this process. This piece is the piece that requires the most uh, cleaning up. Oh, I'm already two hours. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's finish that quickly. Here there was a little thing that was weird in the topology. That's why there's like some pinching and some abnormal stuff uh, that we're going to mostly clean up with uh, adding details there. Just gonna round my corners a little bit, they're a bit pinchy. Finally, I'm going to remove the symmetry. I'm going to reflatten this, put to the ground. Not too much. Okay. Okay. Mesh is composed. Oh, I'm on. I'm not on the clip clip curve. I am on the slice curve. That was the problem. Okay, all right, there we go. It's clean, 
it's all good. Um, let's duplicate this mesh and we're going to just use it for like filling up the parts inside of the of the foot. That's the, going to be the last thing we're going to do before uh, skedaddling. So we don't want we don't want the, the inside of the foot to be hollow All right, so a lot of work to do with that inside of the foot, uh, for sure. But um, that's going to be the mesh we're going to work with. Pretty much the entire mesh for the foot is there. 
And let's remit is it rematch that thing real quick. All right, I thought I was going to be done with the uh, all of the um, all of the meshes for uh, the tibia and the foot on this stream, but uh, we're going to need to have we're going to spend a little bit more time on the next stream to finish finish this part here. After all, it's all good. It's all good. Save. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yep. Well, um, let's call it a week. Um, I'll be back next week around the same time to complete that part of the leg. Uh, maybe next stream I'll also be able to start the detailing. Uh, we'll see about that. But uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. It's uh, I won't lie. Those uh, parts are a bit uh, redundant, a bit boring. Um, if you try to do like something super clean, right? Last um, character that I did was like a character that was not like fully clean. That was a bit like cheating, cutting the corners. This one I really wanted to do like a like a higher end cleaning, but uh, that it is what it is. It takes its time. So there you go. But anyway, yep. I hope everybody had the uh, had fun, and uh, I'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao, ciao.